Woo! For Ryan and Wolf for the Diddy. That's a couple of 18 signings. Yeah, something like Magic and Philly. And I'm the GOAT, yeah, something like Billy. And I'm trying to build this channel like Billy. Billy. And it's crunch time season for Oli. Woo! For Ryan and Wolf for the Diddy. That's a couple of 18 signings. Yeah, something like Magic and Philly. And I'm the GOAT, yeah, something like Billy. And I'm trying to build this channel like Billy. Billy. And it's crunch time season for Oli. Yo, this is the OT99 banter room where opinions are shared and smoke gets served. Look, we're back again with another show. It's your boy, Firms. And we're back again with NK. And we are here to talk about, yes, you guessed it, the transfer news. Look, the window's open. Rumours are spreading like wildfire. Manchester United are right in the center of that news why because we are one of the biggest clubs in the world why especially in the premier league we are the biggest and you know what our name's gonna be centered around it all for clicks you know to sell papers for all of that malarkey and you know what for me i'm here for it because i'm bringing you the news it gets me excited it's an exciting time for me you know it's always been like that you know what i mean so obviously i, I kind of well averse in a lot of this stuff i'm able to cipher out all of the nonsense from all of the truth but you know what let's get into it so do you know what yeah so i mean there's plenty of topics you're talking about pogba sancho's varans and all of them stuff like that so let's get into it so i'm gonna start off with pogba so pogba yeah is a guy who's Coming into his last year of his contract, uh, as a guy, you know, that came to United originally, left as a youth for free. And now history is probably going to repeat itself if he doesn't sign a contract and he's going to walk out the door for free again. How shameful would that be? Now, Manchester United are not in negotiations with Pogba. Pogba's not in negotiations with us or his agent or anything like that. And, and rumours is that, you know, he's going to have those discussions or wait by this time to after the euros to see what offers are, that you know comes in for him now what i've heard today from the rumors that's circulating and the news that's circulating is that the likes of your juventus your barcelona's and your psgs are not gonna come in for him right now they'll be interested in him should he become a free transfer next season but they're not gonna come in for him now Further reinforcing my original thought with Paul Pogba that he's going to stay. Regardless of whether he walks for free or whether, you know, he signs a new contract, I do believe that he's going to be playing for Manchester United next season. What's your thoughts on it, NK, man, with Pogba? Do you, do you, do you want him to stay? Do you want to see it? Can you see him being sold? What's your views on it? Well, I'm so this time, I don't, I don't think that's, 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 that's going to be highly because... It's just a question about if we decide that we want to sell him, the price that we're going to put on his head, I feel like United are going to put probably around like 60, 70 million on him and hope to like get like 60 million for Pogba. And I don't think a lot of cl the clubs that Pogba want to go to at, at this minute, they won't want to pay that money right now. I feel like most of the clubs, as we said, they would like to wait for it in the summer. Because it's not just the transfer fee with Pogba, let's just face it. It's about like the wages yeah. that he's going to come with too. So they're yeah. not going to pay 60 million for a player that they can get for free next summer and on top of that with the wages that he's going to come. So I've always said it like, Pogba, he's kind of like in a position where to him it's kind of like a win-win situation for him anyway. He's going to sit down wait to see what United transfer deals are going to be like. If he like it and then maybe if my United have like a good start, he said, okay then, we have a good start. We kind of are pushing for the title too. We're making progress. So maybe, you know, maybe let me just commit myself to this club, you know, maybe go for another, like maybe three-year contract with the option for one, something like that. So that's what I see him doing. And if we don't do no transfer business and it's not, it's not good, he's going to say, hey, you know, what, you just are not showing the ambition that I want you to kind of like uh, show me. So either you give me like about 400,000 a week Oh, I'm gonna leave for free. So he kind of like got free options to, yeah. to to bargain with, and I think no matter what happened, I feel like he's always gonna be like the winner out of this anyway. Because wherever he goes, he's either gonna get the wages that he want, or he's gonna go to a place that he's gonna actually win stuff with. So whatever happened, he's gonna be the winner. We we are gonna end up being the big losers out of all of this. 
Yeah, and I could see it happening like that as well. And to be fair, I don't... Uh, a part of me with Pogba, it's like, even if he's planning to walk away for free next season, how much is he going to give in that final season? You know, is he going to be trying to protect himself, knowing that he's going to leave anyway for free? There's no risk now, someone say, you know, of him like needing to overperform because everyone knows what Pogba is all about and they're going to go for him regardless, especially if he's going on a free transfer. So how much is he going to put, how much effort is he going to put in for the club? Would he be trying to protect himself from injuries? Do you know all of these things that could potentially hamper a deal? I just don't know. Um, I think that leaves a bit of exposure like for risk, like in terms of, you know, his performance levels going into next season if he hasn't signed already. But for me, I don't see anyone, yeah, I don't see anyone coughing up that type of money, 60, 70 million for Pogba this season, especially when he's going on on a free um, next season if he doesn't sign the contract. So I'm expecting to have him here, you know, and if he's going to be here, then Manchester United obviously need to be prioritising certain positions to support him and facilitate him to flourish at Manchester United. If you're going to go out, go out in a bang, you know, help us win something before you leave. Do you know what I mean? I ain't really got any qualms with Pogba leaving. He's been leave, He's been trying to leave for a long time now. And I've always been like, you know, he's one of the best midfielders in the world when he's on it. But for me, it's just like if, you're, if you want to move on and your heart's not quite in it with Manchester United, you don't feel like you're going to achieve success, then by all means leave because we don't want to keep our unhappy camper. Fergie never did it. So we don't want to be beginning to set those type of presidents at our club. And you know what, I just fear, you know, I just fear that, you know, if we don't win trophies soon, then a lot of our major stars might start leaving, you know. Bruno's obviously the main guy that you're looking at thinking, mm, how long is he going to stick around? Right, Bruno, Bruno, Bruno probably give like United like, another uh, two more seasons to kind of like see. But I, I feel like with Bruno, it's going to come to Bruno and then the manager, you know, and that's when that's when he came, he came down with the same thing with, uh, with Pogba too. It was either Pogba or Mourinho. And then um, my United chose, uh, what do you call it, Pogba. And I feel like with only two, it's going to come down to that. If we end up having no trophyless season, it's going to come down to whether Bruno stays or Ole goes. And you know what they're going to choose. They're always going to choose, uh, what do you call it, Bruno. Because uh, let's face it, the clubs always care about the asset of uh, them, and which is like mostly like the player. But with Pogba, I don't think if whether he's signed a new contract or not, I don't think it's going to affect his performance level. He always do that anyway, like... No matter what he does, if he get injured, people are going to say, oh, he's faking his injuries, just like what it is. But what I fear is if he decides not to sign a new contract, uh, the club itself might freeze him out, you know? And I don't think that would be something that Oli can do. I feel like the board or whatever is to say, okay, then if you're not going to sign a new contract, then we might also just kind of like not play you. A bit like what the Ericsson situation was at Tottenham where he wanted to go and then they kind of like froze him up. I don't know, but... I see similar things with De Gea happening with Pogba, you know, where De Gea wanted to leave, but he couldn't really find any club that could give him the wages that he wants. And eventually, he just signed a contract and now he's just going to probably see how the rest of his career at United and not win nothing, you know. So it's going to be one of those ones that he might have to sacrifice his ambition for the wages, to be honest mm. with you. Yeah, because I feel like that's how it's going to be, to be honest with you. I think he's like, you know, just to round off that point, I mean, he's in a driver's seat. Next season is his last season, if he wants it to be his last season. He's in the driver's seat and he can choose whatever he wants to do. He can go to, he can have his pick, you know, especially when you're free, you can have your pick of any club. So for him, do you know what I mean? It is, I feel like what we do next season, what we do in a transfer window is going to be massive in terms of what's going to be playing on his mind, Pogba's mind. Because he knows he's not... I feel like he knows he's not going anywhere this summer. Two, um, how we perform in the season, obviously, is clearly is going gonna, is gonna, to um, play on his mind. Manchester United won Europa League previously. Pogba still wanted to leave. United's got to be wanted, it's got to be going into advanced stages of the Champions League. United's got to be, you know, winning, like challenging City, Liverpool, all the way to the final day, do you know right. what I mean, of the Premier League. We've got to be... Doing stuff. Europa League is not enough for Pogba, clearly. It's not enough for him. It's not enough for him. So it's not enough. I feel like there's two things that's missing on his CV uh, the Champions League and the Premiership. Like, yeah. you know, because he's won the World Cup with France. Uh, France are probably favorite to win the European Championship too. And as long as he plays for France in the next, like, I don't know, four or five years, he's probably going to win Again. more stuff with, with France too. 
and he won the Serie A to win Italy. So he's not going back to Italy just to go win Serie A. I know, I know his wife is Italian, so maybe their lifestyle is going to be good too. So maybe that might help too. But I feel like he just want to get his hands on the Champions League. That's all he, he ever want to do. You talk about Kante winning the Champions League, Kante becoming, I think, like the second player or so to win the Champions League, Europa League, World Cup, you know, and a Premiership too. He want to be in that kind of like bracket, you know. Oh. He's always setting himself high standard, and I feel like that's what he won't, ever wanted to do. So whatever club provide him with that, he would jump onto that ship. I agree, man. I agree. Let's watch the space and see what happens with Pogba over the next few weeks, months, or whatever. But obviously, any decision making is not going to be to the latter stages, the latter stages of the transfer window, if anything even happens. Anyway, but let's move on to another guy who could potentially be going not for free but for going to like going for a significantly reduced fee and that's Erling Haaland so obviously now you know again news circulating in, in in the reports I think around in Germany or maybe in elsewhere saying that Haaland you know Chelsea is seriously uh trying to push for Erling Haaland um hearing that the the figure being tutored for Erling Haaland I think it was actually in the Daily Mail I read this actually that um the figure's about £170 million um, pounds for Erling Haaland. Now, that's a massive, significant piece of of, of money. Um, but if there's any teams that can, you know, even you even think about Chelsea or be in that category, they'll be one of the teams that you're talking about in terms of signing Haaland. Whether they can afford £170 or whether they will do it is another story. But I know that they've got a lot of players that they can offload to even help balance those books. But, you know, what I'm hearing is that what I've read is it's not necessarily the, the price is high, but there's confidence that they can, they can, that won't be an issue. It's more about the wages and the, and the impact it will have on Chelsea's wage structure. Now, I don't see Harlot going to any team and getting anything less than 250 or even 300, especially um, Minoriola. Uh, and just putting a question to you, so one, do you see that deal being possible? Do you see, you know, maybe Dortmund accepting a swap deal? You know, they've Chelsea's got a number of players, Tammy Abrahams, etc., for example, Hudson O'Day, maybe who knows? Um, do you see them doing a swap deal? Do you see Dortmund accepting that? Do you see him moving this season, knowing that his price next season is going to be? around under 70 million when the release course clicks kicks in and two if his wages is significantly high i know for manchester united that's probably nothing but in a scenario of manchester united for it to phase them the salary will probably have to be above 400 you know be in the highest earner david de Gea. but would you want do you see that happening for um chelsea do you see him moving this season i don't i don't i really don't see anybody spending 117 million on, on Haaland. And to be honest with you, if Haaland is going to go, I expect him to probably be in the bracket of that uh, transfer fee that took Neymar to PSG. Because let's just face it, right now, he is the number one striker in the world in terms of like the quality that he, he, he produced. Although, Better even, than Lewandowski. Uh, huh? Better than Lewandowski right now. Lewandowski's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. doing he's madness. No, he's not better than Lewandowski by the age. He, he's just, a, what, 20 years old? So yeah, he's valuable. He's like one of the most him, valuable you literally players. buying a World Cup striker for the next, like, 10, 15 years, you know? And he looked like he's, like, he got a physical attribute to, like, do it on a long time, too. So, whatever the money is, it's just going to make sense uh, with it. But I think with, 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 with Haaland, too, I feel like he will also like to pick what club he, he goes to. He don't want it to be a situation where there's only one club for him to pick to go to. And I mean, even his agent doesn't even want that. I feel with his agent and stuff, they will, it will suit them better if he go next season where a lot of clubs will be able to afford a transfer fee and then they can detect how much money that he can earn. Because right now, if only Chelsea is the only club that can say, hey, you know what, we can afford 170. They don't really have a bargain chip in terms of like how much wages they can kind of like milk out of it. But when you have a lot of clubs involved in it, then you can say, hey, hey you know what? Well, this person bid, this person bid, what can you hire? And you know, when it's a bidding war, someone always offer mm. more than someone too. I feel Dortmund getting the Champions League 
was a big advantage for them too. And with this kind of like clause that everybody keep on talking about, I don't know, but I have a feeling there's more to that clause than we think because it will make no sense if he's going to go, go to no more. We're not selling him this summer or they will be coming up to say, hey, he is not for sale this summer and let him go for that chip. That's almost half of his value being literally gone off. And I don't think the, the, the clause that people are talking about, I don't think it's what it says it is. I'll be really surprised if that, that clause is true. I would really be surprised. If it is true, it might be maybe a certain kind of like date or so, but I don't think it will be that cheap. I really don't. You know what? That's what's been tooted around. You know, I think he has got a release clause. Do you know why I say that? Is because Erling Haaland, I think when I done some reading on him, you know, even before he went to Dortmund, uh, what club is he at? Salzburg? What one of these teams? Anyway, he's, he's, yeah. he's always had a release clause in his contract. Riola's his model with this guy Harland is always inserted a release clause in it, and that's one of the pro- you know the one of the reasons why Man United couldn't tie down that deal is because he had this release clause in. And for me, I don't see it being the major thing for um, Chelsea. I mean, for them to consider going to Chelsea, knowing that he's going to be putting in that release clause, Riola, into Haaland's contract. Now, the thing is, is is Chelsea going to want to spend that much money, 170 million or whatever that figure is? I don't think it'll be that high. I think it'll probably be, maybe 170 million was included wage package, like a total package, I don't know. But would you want to spend that much? Let's say it's upwards of 120, 130 million. And then also accept a release clause in his contract if you're shelling out that much money. Okay, so how much is the if if you're shelling out 120 million, 130, putting that 170 to a side, what's the release clause gonna be then? Do you know what I mean? It has to be more than what you paid for. So technically, I say that to say this. I mean, as long as Riola has confidence, you know, maybe post this corona corona market that you know the the economy will be stable again and clubs will start you know, be able to flex their financial you know might again why would he feel worried you know that harlan won't be able to get a move again if he's just going to insert a release clause maybe you would say do you know what harlan's got to leave at the end of three years for 150 million 150 million pounds a club will play will pay that in three years yeah but no big club in their right mind put a release clause on there that is going to be achievable for any anything you go to clubs like Real Madrid, Barcelona, because that's that's these are the clubs that he's ultimately trying to sell these players to. These big clubs will not make you pull like a 150 million release clause inside. Real Madrid always put like about 300 million or 400 million release clause, like clauses that nobody else can pull. Even Agüero, Agüero go put like about 200 and something million in his release clause. You know, I feel like he always like to do plays in stages too. Even with Pogba, too, he tried to do the same thing too. Like Pogba, the, the 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 thing has always been Juventus, Man United, Real Madrid. That was the plan that he done for him. Even the AC Milan goalkeeper too, same thing too. He was supposed to be AC Milan, move on to a different club, and then go back to a top club too. Now, because of coronavirus, for example, the AC Milan goalkeeper too, he ran out his contract to the end and he couldn't find a club. I'm hearing he might be going to PSG because yeah. obviously they are the only club right now that basically, I mean, they are buying him, but they don't really need him. But they, they got a top glass goalkeeper too, but they gain him too. So that's one of the things you need to worry about. But with, with, with Haaland, yes, he's going to get a lot of the suitors too, but no big club is going to put that wages clause inside too. So that's why he always want to sell it to a club that he can normally kind of like in future bullet for them to kind of like sell, you know? And one of the clubs he can pull it for them to sell. He tried that with Man United. It didn't work with Pogba. With Chelsea too. Let's face it. With Chelsea, you can try bullet them. Sometimes it worked, but they, they ended up getting bullied uh, with Hazard. Hazard was always linked to Real Madrid. Real Madrid eventually he got his transfer. So transfer to like the English club would normally suit him. It won't suit him going to uh, what do they call it, Man City, because Man City will not want to sell it to any club. It will suit him to go to clubs like. Man United and uh, what do you call it? Your Chelsea because they can always end up selling to one of the Spanish clubs to make money. But then now they're broke anyway, so I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it, I feel like the the contract situation on part. So I think he's gonna stay personally. I think Dortmund, you know, they've made it clear they've come out and said he's not going anywhere, and I feel like they're gonna stick to it. If there's anything I learned from last season and the J- Jaden Sancho saga is that 
Dortmund when they say these things, unless it's an astronomical figure that you're putting in front of them, they ain't going to budge. But for me, I just feel like there'll be either two things if he does get this move this season. One, he's not going to have a long-term contract. So I see the maximum being like, what, you know, uh, three year where he can run down his contract. He's still very young and then he can get his eventual move to, because I know, I feel like, you know, he is probably going to want to go to your big club like Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern, or one of them teams anyway. Or there's going to be a release clause in that contract and you're going to have to accept it if you want him there. And that's the only, that's the only way that I can see Erling Haaland leaving this season because the way how Riol is treating Haaland is almost like how Ibrahimovic had his uh, career, where that guy plays for every single club. Riol is about the bag. He's trying to make the money. He's putting these release clauses in there. One year. He's, he does everything he needs to do for his clients. Don't get me wrong. Like, he does it. He makes sure they get good wages and, he, you know, he tries to get the moves that they want. But ultimately, the more moves that his players can, his clients can get, the more agent fees he can be scooping up from every single deal and every single club. So for him, it's in his own best interest as well to make sure that that deal was short and sweet so he can move him on to another club or the contract is, you know, short. I have a release clause or the contract is short so he can run it down, which is what Pogba's doing now. So for me, I think Haaland is one of those things where with how we operate as Manchester United, we know we like to keep people to their old and frail, um, like Phil Jones and them, man. So I just really can't see Manchester United personally. I know... Maybe that can happen with Chelsea or maybe they sort something out with Manchester United. As much as we want Haaland, as much as like he is the guy striker to have, I can't see it happening with Manchester United because Rayola is his is, is, is agent. I just can't see that happening. So obviously we've got Cavani for another year, which is good because he's on smoke as long as he can stay fit. And then next season, obviously we've got to start spreading our scouting network large and wide because we need to bring in a quality striker and if it's not Kane if he goes this season um, Harden's not going to come next season I can't see us getting that done one bit I'm just going to put it out uh, he's out of the question for us really he's out then you know who you left with you know who you left with Man United's probably going to start having to look for someone like Cristiano Ronaldo do you know what I mean? Playing that into well, next season, season, no, no, no next, next season, season. And I would, I would that's, write that's a problem I've got with United too like there's no plan in place whatsoever like who, what, what, what normally is the plan for all of this? Like, and even this summer windows too, we talk about we have, we got a director of football in place. We got Darren Fletcher too, who's helping like the director of football. So we got two people inside there. This summer was supposed to be different than the previous ones too. And I'm still seeing the same mistakes too. Look, we're not going to sign no player before the Eros. And if we don't sign no player before the Eros, that means that you're looking for the end of Eros or probably for the group stage to finish. And the group stage is not going to finish for another, like, maybe two weeks or so. So in July, before you can announce, like, player signing two. That's almost players reporting back to preseason two. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what's the point of having all these people in place if you're still going to have the same transfer policy as we have had, like, previously? Like, what yeah. are you paying all these people to do for? We need to see a difference, right? We need to see a change now. Like, you just gave people that was already in the staffing sort of structure raises, but not brought in anyone specialist to actually do the job. We need to see something different. The Glazers went to the fan forum and they started talking about, you know, investing in the club and in the stadium and all of these things. Look, we need to see you put your money where your mouth is. We need to see you put your actions, you know, like actions, you know what I mean? Get these things over the line, do something differently to what we've been experiencing from our whole flipping childhood and adulthood so far it's long right but you know moving on moving on from um sort of Erling Haaland and stuff I mean obviously I'm not sleeping on Mason Greenwood you know and I feel like we are bringing in some of these guys like you know your 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 um Cavani's to hopefully nurture guys like Greenwood Greenwood can learn off them and obviously Greenwood is going to be our main guy. He's the generational talent. He's going to be the guy leading us. And that's exciting because if you look us out there, we struggle, you know, outside of Kane and Haaland, there's nobody else she can talk about being centre forward. Then you start looking at the people that is already out there, like Cristiano Ronaldo. I wouldn't rule it out, by the way, that Man United brings him back if Cavani leaves. I wouldn't rule it out as long as Ronaldo's um, willing to accept a significantly reduced wage. And for me, if he's thinking about going to 
um, Inter Miami or one of them teams or Manchester United, Inter Miami can't pay that wage. I don't see him going China, so I can see him doing something. But do you know what? That's another story for another day. Look, Varane, another big transfer link is us and Varane. Now, Varane is obviously our main centre-back priority. We talk about him all the time, you know, and for me, having a successful window in terms of defensive options, I can't look past Varane. I seriously can't look past Varane. Now, the stories I'm hearing about Varane is, you know, he is obviously not signed his contract. You know, we all know that. Stories is that he's won in a new challenge. Um, but obviously, as a Manchester United fan, that what I've seen happen with Sergio Ramos, I'm taking it with a little bit of pinch of salt, like, because I can't get too excited because for some reason, you know, Man United love to get played and, you know, they get their contract at the end of the day. But story is, is that, you know, he's been offered around 9 million euros from Real Madrid. Uh, and per month, is that per month? Yeah, whatever it is. And, um, that point off it's net nine million euros and manchester united um no so he's not happy about it he wants 10 to 11 million euros at what alaba got and manchester united have offered um him about 12 million euros now is that enough to secure varan do you feel like he's hot in it do you feel like he actually would come to Manchester United? Or do you feel like he's going to stay at Real Madrid? He's going to use us and sign his contract and then that would be it. I don't think it's a point of like using us. I feel like no matter what he does, Real Madrid don't have the money to give it to him anyways. That's the, that's the thing. Real Madrid can't broke, broke. You know, they are broke as, as a guest. So whether they want, this is not a situation with like Sergio Ramos. They, they don't have the money to give him that big contract that he needs. So that, that's just like, answer the question. The only way he signed with Real Madrid is if he accepts those demands that they presented to him. And I feel like if he was going to do that, then he would have done it a long time ago. He want to change. He want to change. But my problem right now is not, even, well, it's not even the wages. It's about negotiating the transfer fee with Real Madrid. And United always play this game where they feel like they are the only club that is after him just because a guy agent tell you like yeah you know what if 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 you give us the the right contract we are just because someone told like we are interested doesn't mean that you are the only club and sometimes we play we play like oh you know what we've got a bunch of pick you know let's just go waste our time let's just play around and we can offer him the contract like you know we always just do that i'm sure there's been a meeting between us and his agent you know they have been there too where they have told him like okay you know what we will come, you know. We are interested in moving. Where Real Madrid has given us a contract. We don't want to sign. We're looking for a new talent. And the premiership is something that appealed to us. That conversation has taken place. They probably maybe have talked about roughly how much he's, he, he want to earn per year. I'm sure that has taken place too. So now the next thing is for United to go and have a conversation with Real Madrid about a transfer fee. And that's where we always act so long as a club, you know? And this is where, like, look, Chelsea are looking for a centre-back too. And Chelsea are a club where they don't play. They do not play. And I fear if Chelsea make that phone call to his agent to say, hey, we want you, do you want to come? And he say, you know what? I will be interested. They will call Real Madrid right now, pay that money and get that deal done. And that is my only fear about that too. Because Look, he won a new challenge. I feel like he will either end up uh, in the Premiership or maybe uh, go back to what they call it, France. I really yeah. don't see him doing another season at what they call it, uh, Real Madrid. Because as I said, Real Madrid said there's no way they want to let him go for free because they want that money because they are broken. They need that money anyways. But they want to get a bit of transfer fee. So, Veron transfer, I feel like it will go down to like end of July because it's always going to come down to how cheap can they get his price for because obviously he got one year left I feel like it's going to always be like getting the bargain so it's going to drag it is going to drag I see him really I see him end up in the premiership I don't know whether it's going to be uh, at Chelsea 
or am um, my united by seeing uh, one of these club but i feel like it's going to be one of those clubs that drag all the way to end of july possibly maybe uh august but if he's going to be a my united player he will not be our player before we will play the first premier league game of the season and he will not be our player that is for sure do you know what right I tried, you know, I can't visualize Varane in a Manchester United shirt, which is scary. I can probably more vi- visualize him in a Chelsea shirt than a Manchester United shirt, but ultimately, I can see Varane going to PSG. Like, I know they don't need him, and I know that they've, you know, they, you know, you know what I mean? They've got Kim Bempe and all of these guys, but I can just see PSG coming in later on down the line with a bid and say, oh, like they're interested. I can literally see it. Like, they're interested. Offer him what he wants. It's all about the wages, right? Offer him what he wants. And he's gone. Like, and it will be so smooth. It will be so swift. Just like what they did with um, Genie. You know what I mean? They came yeah. just to steal your girl. You never heard nothing about PSG before you knew it. Bam. Gone. Swiftness. Chelsea, Swiftness, right? Yeah. They want for... Obviously, so Chelsea's looking out for a centre-back. As well as a striker. I feel like Chelsea are very efficient. You know, they were very efficient last season. They're very efficient. For me, I feel like they might be slightly distracted. They know that they see Varane. They know he's a good centre-back. They know that, you know, they would love to have him. But I feel like they're slightly distracted at the same time with trying to get a striker maybe or doing other sort of business in their mind that, you know, I'm just thinking, why aren't they pushing for it, gunning for it as much? You know, why aren't we seeing Chelsea's names in the, because in the Chelsea headband. done the business quietly too. Look at what do you call it? Uh, this guy, uh, Warner, that went there too. Every for the whole summer they were talking about he was going to Liverpool, 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 Liverpool. Last summer, that's what everybody was talking about. You know, they're talking about oh maybe my United might be in for him, Man City too. Where did he end up going to? Mm, it's true. Chelsea. Chelsea a is not one. a club. All this club, what they do is they 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 like to leak stuff out there for the publicity of it. United is one, one of the worst when it comes to that too. They like to leak, leak stuff out there too. Like United is like, like a girl that always want attention, you know? We'd be like, we want to post on Instagram and get so many likes. Yeah, yeah, That's us yeah. nice too. You That's know? it. Chelsea are one of those ones that they post pictures once every year. They don't really care about the prospects. By the time you know, boom, done, gone. You know? United, United's actually got a transfer deal. section. They've actually got a transfer section, Manchester United, on their website about transfers. Like, why have they got... Right. Like, we, we, we love the attention. And you know what? I'm telling you, don't be surprised if he end up going there because... Chelsea, in terms of like defense, they are, they are very defense is something that they want to strengthen because I feel like their manager, once again, he don't want to play the three at the back. He need a quality centre back to play there too. Their best centre back literally got a year left on his contract. You know, that's their best centre back, Thiago Silva too. He just signed a new one year extension too. He's old. He might not give them that thing. Their aim this season is to win the Premiership, and they need that defensive partnership that's going to be a long thing there. Don't be surprised if they go there when my United are playing. Hey, can we give you 50 million euros? Can we give you 40? They will just go ask Real Madrid, how much is it? Real Madrid say 50 million euros. Boom. They just put it there. And then by the time you know, he's going on there. I will not be shocked if he end up at Chelsea. I would not be asking him more at Chelsea than that. The only way PSG gets him is if these two English clubs are kind of like playing kind of like games in terms of like the wages for him because he want to leave. You know, he don't want to stay another season there too. So if they kind of like play kind of like long game, his agent will just go to PH and say, hey, my, my, my player is interested in coming. Do you want to make a deal? You know, and then he will end up going there. Because you know, when players just want to leave the club, it don't matter who come in with the bait, they will end up going because they want to get out of the club that bad. That's why I see PH going. Because I don't think like going back to France really appeals to me. He's already playing the French league. He want to play in a different league. And I feel like right now, I see him more in the Premiership than I see him in the French league. I really do. I, I hope that happens. And I don't know if Varane's alluded to it or anything like that. You know, players usually say, you know, I want to try the Premier League. You know, that's something that a lot of people's goals is to do. A lot of players' goals is to be part of the Premier League that hasn't been part of it already because they know they like the awe, the glitz, the glamour of it, the fans and everything like that. I haven't been following Varane closely enough to hear if he has any vested interest in the Premier League like that. So this is why I can't categorically be like, you know, um, yeah, he'll definitely want to come to the Premier League over PSG. Because as far as I'm concerned, it could just be about pay packet. You know, who's offering the most money? What team are you going to most likely win the Champions League with again? Or, 
your, your you know trophies with again and i just i can't tell yet so obviously as time goes on we'll be able to know a bit more about that but you know what let's move on to the guy the main showstopper Jaden sancho we can't do a transfer news without Jaden sancho being brought up look Jaden sancho is a guy that we've been chasing for many years it feels like um obviously last season was a mazza we didn't get him this season there's been a lot of progression with discussions no official bids or no engagement with Dortmund has happened yet, but we've been discussing with his agent um, and his team regarding the, you know, fresh, um, what do you call it? Freshen up the details of the contract in terms of the years, you know, we've got news that, you know, it could potentially be uh, to 2026. Um, wages, you know, I think uh, personal terms got agreed, you know, last year. So, well, most of it, if not all of it. Um so obviously now it's the transfer fee which is the major stumbling block now for me i was looking at the news obviously we've been hearing that it's 80 million euros i think believe or 80 million pounds whatever it is pounds, 80 million pounds yeah 80 million pounds which is equivalent to about 95 million euros um plus add-ons now the add-ons is the cheeky thing right because the add-ons is when, when you think about add-ons, and I've heard like 20 million in add-ons, taking it up to 100 million. 100 million pounds now. Jaden Sancho is a guy that was, you know, Dortmund's was saying, you know, we're not selling this guy for, I think it was like 110 million pounds, 120 million euros or something along those lines that they wanted to sell him to us for. We was trying to agree like a structured deal. It didn't quite work out. Now they're saying that it's 80 million pounds, 20 million in add-ons, that's 100 million. So where people say in the news that, you know, uh, you know, it was significantly less. How less is it? If they wanted 110 million and now they're saying 80 plus 20, so that's 10 million difference. Um, and they want it to be a realistic add-ons as well. So a lot of people say, oh, you could do any silly add-ons. No, they want realistic add-ons. They want add-ons that they can actually, they want to see, you know, Sancho score 30 goals over his course of playing at Man United, uh, certain appearances, all of these things. You know, a lot of that, let's say 90% off, not somewhere between a good proportion of that will be realistic add-ons now how much are we saving and if it comes down to that and Manchester United do end up paying that and I don't think personally we should pay that in this COVID market pay a hundred commit to a hundred million pounds for a guy that's got two years left on his contract um he didn't have as better season as he did previously but it was still good I don't see us you know I don't see us um getting off lightly with Dortmund because they're just stress uh, but I do think it's a lot of money to commit to for a guy um, in this COVID market in this COVID market and for me do you know what I mean if you're only paying 10 million difference what was the point of going for all of that stress last season you might as well have brought him in Sancho probably could have helped you win Europa League probably could have helped you close the gap down and see chase them all the way down to the last game of the season you know what I mean do more we probably wouldn't even be in Europa League we probably would have got to a, um done well better in the Champions League you know what I mean so what was the point but um for me what do you think do you think that's a fair price do you think Sancho's coming do you think it will happen Ooh. before the Euros um or after the Euros Ooh, well, yeah, so first of all let me just say Sancho deal ain't happening before the Euros oh that's kind of like <laughs> that he was gonna say before that was because you know, the, the, the fan room was coming, the glasses were gonna talk, so they put it out there, it's gonna come before the Euros. Get fans excited. He ain't coming before the Euros. He ain't coming before the Euros. United wanna do all this thing where they do like a music video for Sancho if they do sign him, you know, so they were gonna wait until after the Euros too, which is a dangerous game too, because well, what happened when he get injured during the Euros too? Because he's gonna fit in medical too, you know? That's a possibility too. But I feel like, you know, one thing about Dortmund is they are very fair in terms of like, players you know in terms of a player price i don't think all this like thing that's going around like oh it's eight million pounds plus i don't that's united pulling the story that it is never that kind of like way when dortmund say hey you know what well, we got a gentleman's agreement with sancho to let him leave and they say that they are not going to make this deal complicated the only people that are going to make this deal complicated is manchester united dortmund would have probably like since that window closed last summer would have told Sancho like, hey, Sancho, look, we would not let, we didn't let you go, but if someone come in next summer for 80 million, 
we will let you go. They're not going to do 8 million plus add on. They do not want to make this deal more complicated. They have made an agreement with Sancho. They bought Sancho for cheap. No matter what happened, whether they sell him for 80 million or so, they're still going to make a big, big, what do you call it, transfer uh, profit from this deal. He also helped them to get to Champions League. So it just they just want to do that too. And what they want to do too is they want to also encourage like a lot of youngest to just say, you know what, come to us. And when the time is right, we will let you go. We are not going to sit on you to just do that too. This deal is 80 million. Flat. 80 million, not going high, not going low. It's 80 million. I feel like what United are trying to do is they are trying to be cheap by coming in with like a, a payment structure that might not suit like Dortmund. They're going to try to drag it on because, you know, Sancho is in the air role, So they're going to say, okay, we got a bit of time to kind of like play a bit of like time with them. And I just want them to be very, very careful because you don't want Dortmund to come and say, hey, you know what? We ain't even going to sell him no more too. But I feel like it's a straight down deal. 80 million will do that. There is no ass on there. Maybe it's, what do you call it? 80 million. That include any add-on too. Because as I told you, no one will pay the 80 million cash. So maybe they won't like 50, 60 upfront. United trying to go for 40 upfront, like a bargain kind of like deal and do a lot of things. But then this deal is straightforward. 80 million, there is no add-on. Dortmund will not make stuff complicated. And that is for sure. If it's 80 million up front, then what do you think is causing the delay then? What, if it's, if it's well, 80 I'm million. I'm just going to tell you, it, it's just 80 million is like straight, you know. It's just United always trying to feel like they are very kind of like smart, you know. They always just want to do that. I feel like we we say whatever you want to say. But since we've been doing transfer deal, the only transfer deal that I feel like we have got a bargain for was Bruno. And Bruno transfer was one of the ones that just dragged on for a very, very long time. Eventually, we managed to kind of like get it for cheap. So they, they're just trying to kind of like just do that kind of a same thing. So that going forward, they can tell other clubs that this is how we do business. You know, we're not going to do business on your terms. We do business on our terms. And when you do that, it can be a win situation or a lose situation for the club. They know, they know, they why not to, it's advantage United because they know uh, what they call a central want to come. You know, Dortmund want to sell, Sancho want to come. So they just know that it is like, as a business person, you don't go there and just give the, the, the person whatever they want. You always want to try play the water too. And as I told you, Sancho being in the heroes too, doesn't make them want to rush the deal because even if they agree the deal today, they cannot announce it until England is out of the heroes because that's when they can do all the amazing video promotion <laughs> crap that they want to do anyway. So for now, I can see Santa and Dave. I can see huh? Santan. I can see Santan Dave because you know he supports oh, Man United. Trust me, they're gonna you know what's it. next, right? I don't even know. I don't know if Sancho is sponsored by Adidas or not. My, my, he probably might be sponsored by Adidas too. I would not be surprised because Pogba too was sponsored by Adidas too. So if this guy was sponsored by Adidas too, they're gonna just make it big. Right now, the United are just trying to just long this transfer deal to just get a very like cheaper deal, save some kind of like money. Maybe whether it's five million, ten million, they're just trying to save. Some kind of like money or make the payment structure suit their needs more likely too and that's what they're gonna do but what that does is they can just do that all they want but we are a club that we are known for doing one deal at a time so would you not want to get this deal like done and and done with and then move on to the the, the next deal you know so it got nothing to do with Dortmund trust me it got all to do with United trying to play that kind of like stingy thing that they always been doing nowadays Look, I'm, I'm gathering all the information I can at the minute because we're supposed to have had this restructure in the, in the boardroom and all of that stuff. So I want to see how things play out. Obviously, the window, transfer window is not going crazy right about now because of the Euros and all of these things. But And friendlies as well. It's not only the Euros. Friendlies are currently Man, going you on. You said about PSG outside two players already. Bro, Let's I know. Start, I know. I'm in the process of signing two players too. <laughs> People are signing. I know, I know, but it's 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 funny because it's like who we're who we're linked to. The guys that we usually go for, are guys that are a lot of the time are well known and established, which makes it even a lot more difficult. You know, like if we're going for people like undercover names, you know, those those little low profile that no one even knows about, maybe it'll be easier. Or if you're going for people that are having, I guess, Man. going for free, then maybe it might be slightly different. Not saying that we'll be signing these guys like how Chelsea was doing it efficient, but uh, it probably help. But you know what? Talk about the Euros, man. Donny van der Beek, man. What luck has that guy gotten, man? Donny van der Beek has a hamstring injury. He even gave a message, you know, online. He gave a message. I, I didn't listen to it, but um, 
I'll try and catch it later, but I, I, I guess he's probably thanking thanking people for supporting him through this tough period and stuff. Obviously, he had a poor season last season, not of all his own doing, obviously, because of, you know, down to selection issues with Oli not, not choosing him. Mm-hmm. Was hopefully wishing that he could go on kickstart his season with Manchester United, his career of Manchester United, have a good Euros, come into the squad, show what he can do, hopefully, in that pivot, in the midfield with, with Netherlands. If he got that opportunity, he's not going to get it now. Um, he's not going to get a good pre-season, probably not. I um, mean, you would hope he would get a few games, but probably not. So, what does that mean for him? And what does that mean for Donny van der Beek's future at Manchester United, man? Do you see him being any different to last season? Or do you feel like... I think, you know, I think Donny, I really feel Donny will leave Man United, not this summer, but in January. You know, he will leave in January because one of the things that he needed to do, he needed to go into the Eros and he needed to have a very good Eros, you know? Mm, just mm. to kind of like, just let people know that, you know, it's just not... My United are just not giving me a chance. If you give me a chance, this is what is going to happen. And he had a very difficult year. So mentally, I don't think he was right mentally. And going onto the Eros would have probably be like good for him too. And then you get this injury too. So mentally, he's going to be all over the place. Because let's just face it, players don't deal well with like injuries too. And people forget too, next summer is the World Cup. You know, next summer is the World Cup. We keep on forgetting that too. So, and you know, players will want to play there. This this summer, I feel like he's even lucky to be going to the Euros with Holland in the first place because he hasn't had enough games. Any other country, he will not be making it. You know, he's lucky to go. If he finds another season that he did again, I don't think he, he gets to go to the World Cup if Holland do kind of a qualified too. And you know, players make a lot of noise. Players make a lot of noise. And I feel like... If he doesn't have a good preseason and only just stick to like his preferred kind of like starting eleven or whatever it is that he does, the only way I see him changing is if only gets we have like a pass that only gets that and a new manager coming and convince him like hey I'm gonna play. But if not, I really see him uh, leaving United in general, like just like Jesse did and going on loan. I really do. I really do. It's, it's a shame that like, this injury is a very shame. But I see kind of like that happening, especially if he don't have have preseason with us. I see the same thing happening. I can really see do. a loan. I could see a loan potentially happening, especially if Oli's still our manager by January, whatever. I can see a loan happening because there's no way that Donny's gonna want to sit out that many. He's not gonna want a repeat of last season. You know, we apparently, you know, we gave him promises that he's in a long-term plan, and next season is gonna be different. If we're in January and this guy's only played like two games or three games, not starting any games, he's not gonna want to be staying at Manchester United. He will be pushing for a move alone, whatever like that. And, you know, all good for, good for him as well. I won't, I won't blame him, you know. I really wanted Donny at the club, you know, when we was linked through with him in, in last summer's transfer window. And, you know, I was happy that we got him, but he's not getting any game time. And I know he can do a lot more. You know, he's shown us little glimpses of, glimpses of what he can do. And he's technically way, way, way gifted, way levels above what we've got in our midfield right about now. So why he ain't getting game time is... is is you know I can understand one of the reasons because of our defense and how we leak goals and stuff, but it's just like this is what it comes down to, you know, is is you you've got managers out there that can find a way, you know, to incorporate their best players and get the best out of them. And then you've got us who, you know, we keep shielding our back four with uh, McFred and then obviously it takes up a position where other people can be utilizing it, you know. And that same goes right. for our bench. One of the guys is Ahmed Diallo, which I want to come on to next because he is just looking like a little gem right about now. It's looking like, you know, it, it excites me, you know, because I was up, I was sort of uh, pessimistic about about Ahmad Diallo. I was thinking, you know, are we going to, you know, waste another bit of money on this youngster? And he got a few games, only a handful of games. And what he did in those handful of games really got Manchester United fans excited. He gave us something to be like, wow, this guy's got potential to be something serious and I do believe if you got a lot more games under his belt Manchester United fans will be like you know what do we even need Sancho do you know what I mean they'll be thinking there'll be a proportion of them not all of them but there'll be some thinking you know what this guy can turn into a star do we need to be focusing and spending all of this money that we've got majority of our transfer budget on Sancho or can we delay it and focus on other areas now obviously you saw Ahmad Diallo put away that 97th minute goal in the friendly against what is it Burkina Faso? So he scored that free kick for Senegal and they got some praise. Is it Senegal Ivory Coast? Where's he from? 
Whether, yeah, Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast, yeah. And he got some good, he got um, high praise from Didier Drogba um, saying, you know, he's, he's, he's scored, paraphrasing, but, you know, he's going to go on to get many more goals. That's obviously a big confidence boost for someone like Amadiello being so young and stepping into the scene so fresh. And there's going to be a lot more spotlight on this kid. And I feel like Manchester United is missing a beat not giving this guy more game time. I feel like we should have given him more game time last season. I feel like this season is the time to expose him a lot more and take a lot more risk because this guy, I just have the feeling, you look at him when he plays, his decision-making is great. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's, he's dribbling, he's great. He's got the speed, his link-up play, it's all looking good. And you look at guys like Rashford, he's more seasoned, and you just think like, then you look at Diallo, and you just see how young he is and the decision he makes to pass it you know release the ball and all of these things just seems more seasoned just like why can't why isn't guys that rash doing them type of things you know what i mean but i'm excited to see more of diallo man what's your thoughts on diallo yeah with diallo you know what i told you like i was i was amazed he didn't come on like doing the europa league final i was amazed because the game against Wolves, he had a very very good game and i feel like if you brought him on with like 10 minutes to go or so you tell him like hey you know what dude i feel like he would have brought like a lot of energy into the team so i was shocked you know, the good thing about Diallo is that most of these players are going to Eros. You know, he have the luxury of not going to the Eros. So preseason will be very, very key for him because mm. most of our stars will not be ready for preseason. So I see him getting a lot of like game time in preseason. So if he have a good preseason, just like how Greenwood did have like a preseason, like when you have a good preseason, then you ask the manager's question too. Like, hey, you know what? I've had a good preseason now, give me the chance. And I feel like he will have a good preseason. I know he will, you know. Yeah. I know he will have a kind of like good preseason. The only problem that I go with him is that the African Cup of Nations are going to be around uh, December, January time. And that's normally when a lot of the games in the Premiership are kind of like played anyways too. So I feel like that might just, it, it, depending on if he's getting game times or not, I don't see him getting a lot of like game times anyways. But that might be a good thing for him or a bad thing for him because if he goes there and he have a good tournament, it's only going to give him a chance or no. But I really see preseason being very, very key for him. If he mm. goes and he have a good preseason, Ole will have no option but to play him. And I'm not talking about starting him for the most game, but I'm just talking about bringing him on with like, just a bit like, you know, when, uh, what do you call it, Greenwood did like uh, last season, you know, the previous one to where, he used to come on a lot as a sap, and then he was taking his chances, kind of like scoring goals. I feel like Ahmed might probably like start to. I fancy him even starting the first game of the season because I'm hearing Rashford might have a surgery after the Euros, so he might probably be uh, out for some time too. If he goes and have the surgery too, players like Sancho and all the players that go to Euros, so they will need like a holiday, so they might not be really really fit. So if he have a good preseason, have a one, I, I really see him starting the first game of the season and once you have a first good game who knows you know it's just very hard to just keep, keep you out of the team yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right you're right and i hope he does because i didn't think of that as well because certain guys will probably need a little bit more of a break um so you know i think after the euros i think there's probably going to be about three four weeks before the premier league starts i think it's a month um, a month. Uh, month because the Euros finish on the 20th the premiership starts on the 14th but most of the time to a lot of the players normally kind of like get like two weeks off they'll get their holidays so, and do their thing yeah they get their uh, holidays after the, after the Euros so depending on what time their team kind of like get knocked out anyway they still know the two weeks and after that two after the two weeks you need like your your fitness too most of them are going to miss preseason anyways you know most of them are going to be if they don't miss preseason even if they get knocked out in the late stages of the tournament they will still miss the early part of preseason and they will probably make it to maybe one game, which is not enough to start the first Premier League game, you know. Mm. And Rashford is one guy that needs a lot of rest. Diallo can play both on the left and the right. So can Sancho. Sancho can play both left and the right too. Martial too, both left and right. And a lot of people are forgetting about uh, Martial too. I really feel like he will have a very good season. I, there's something that I feel like he might be the guy to watch, uh, what do you call it, next season too. But... I feel Ahmed too. If Ahmed have preseason with United, stay injury free doing like this holidays, have a good preseason. I really see him gain uh, starting the season. I hope us. so. I hope so. And, uh, and now that Martial, a lot of the attention's away from him because he hasn't been playing. He's got injured, and then you know he's not in the. Is he in the Euros? I don't think is he in the. No, team? he didn't no. go to the Euros. He didn't go to, which is a shame for him. Which is a shame. 
he can he can focus on just getting fit and getting ready for the season, I guess. So hopefully he does come back. He does come back with a bang because if, if, if guys like him, Martial, you just don't know what you're going to get. And hopefully we're going to get one of these seasons next season that we did when he first came. And then obviously not last season, but the season before when him and Rashford was doing a madness. So we needed those extra goals. So hopefully he does come back nice. But, you know, obviously if Rashford as well, I'm kind of upset, you know, Manchester United has got these players with such big influence playing for England because they're, they're injured, but yet they're still in the, in the team. You know, you had rumours of Rashford needing to have not only a soldier, soldier, so, so, shoulder sort of um, uh, sort of surgery or whatever it is, because it's not fully healed, but then also his toe as well. He needs to get that sorted. And I think he's decided, you know, after the Euros, that he's going to sort out his toe and then maybe delay his shoulder and then that's going to probably, he's going to miss potentially the start of the season, like you were saying, because of those things. But he's a guy that shouldn't have even have gone. Maguire shouldn't have even have gone because he's taken up a spot for guys like Lingard. He's worked his socks off, for example, um, and can't even get in because the numbers are too complete, even though they don't play in the same position. And you just think like Manchester United, man, or, or Southgate, whoever it is letting these guys do what they're doing, it's just annoying because, yeah, Rashford's doing his thing, but he's not the same guy that I'm used to seeing running at guys at full speed, dribbling past them these days. Yeah, he does a bit of dribbling, running into traffic and stuff, but he's not driving at guys as much as he used to do it like two, three years ago. Do you know what I mean? He's like playing like an old age pensioner right about now. And it's a bit annoying for someone as young, athletic as him. But anyway, moving on. Italy, reports in Italy about Sergio Romero, and not the goalkeeper, no, it's not him. It is the centre-back. So he is a Juve player. Or is he a Juve player? Atlanta a, player? Uh, yeah, so he's, 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 he's loaned to Atlanta, but he's a Juve player. So there's rumours that Manchester United, you know, made a bid for him, 45 million euros. And um, that came out today and, got, and that, that got squashed, which I'm happy about because... If we're linked to Sergio Romero, this centre back for Atlanta playing, how the hell is Varane going to be ended up at Manchester United if we're putting in bids for this guy? It makes throws everything out the window in terms of who our top priority is. And it almost tells you that Varane don't want to come to us if those rumours are true and we're looking elsewhere. So I don't know anything about him, to be fair. I don't know anything about this centre back, but I was so happy to hear that it's not true. Yeah, it's, it's just all fake news, and that's that's just like that's just that's just classic United. We are going to be a club that we are going to be linked to so many kind of like teams, and then by the time you know, you're not going to get none of them too. You know, I'm hearing even Ben White too. Price, like I don't know, we just get linked to so many things, and by the time you know, we're not even going to get our first choice. We're not going to get our second choice, and then come deadline day, we just out here just scrambling for leftover food. You know, so all this Winks. just. Winks, Ben White are going to end up Right, and he's going to be out there just scrabbling like all this, like, because for the past two seasons, we've always done, I don't remember the last time United done transfer, transfers early in the season. The last time I remember was uh, Van Gaal, you know. But even then, we didn't do the transfers early, you know. When we signed like uh, Memphis and stuff like early during the season, that was the last time we actually done our deals early. Since then, we have never done no deals early too. We keep on talking about there's a lot of players that need to go out, out the windows too. And sometimes you need to buy first and let them go out too. And if we free have been bought, then what happened to that? We free, for example, we free sell Mata, I mean, yeah. what's it called, Matic, to just go. We are left to just two mil for this at the club right now. So if you sell uh, Matic, then realistically, you need to, we need to get two more mil for this too. But we're not doing that too. So I don't know. That news is just fake news. I don't really see United uh, going in there. But then again, it's United. You just never know. Maybe he's our fourth choice. And when we can get none of the players, we're just going to end up signing him and then making him come and sit on the bench like how we're doing with like... Because if we don't sign a world-class kind of a player, yeah. I'm sorry, but it's still going to be Lindelof and Maguire. And it's just going to be a waste of windows. Like we say strengthening. Yeah. So you cannot buy players to come and sit on the bench. Last, last summer... We did not strengthen. Say what you want to say. Van der Beek was not a strengthen signing. Ahmed was not a strengthen. It's the same Cavani, thing. you could say that, but Cavani, it, it took him some time to even uh, become a thing. And even, let, let's face it, if Martial was fit, 
I don't even see Cavani starting, to be honest with you, if Martial yeah. was fit. So yeah, last right. time we never strengthened. Yeah. And the summer, the season before that, we didn't, we didn't strengthen because Bruno didn't come in until January, you know. So I don't know what's wrong with this club. I really don't know what's and wrong this with is, this club, and, but we'll see. And this is why I'm so insistent on Manchester United going for our number one options because Manchester United too often go for these guys like, you know, your third, fourth options. All of a sudden, we're going to be linked to Winks and all of these guys. Look, these guys are not going to be displacing McFred. If you can, if you look at any player that we're linked with and then still look at our team and say, is this guy going to walk into our team and be playing week in, week out? If you can't confidently say that with chest, then Manchester United shouldn't be linked with this guy because we're not in a position right now to be thinking about nice squad depth. We need to be thinking about guys that is going to strengthen this first team. That We've got so much to do. And if you're strengthening this first team, then those first teamers will eventually go to your bench because, you know, then you can start looking at your bench and see, okay, those that used to be first teamers are now sitting on your bench. Now your first, your bench has gone stronger. You don't want to be looking at guys that are not fighting for that first team spot or can't walk in. And this is my issue. This is why I can't look past people like Varane. I can't look past your Shanto, Sancho's with strikers. I really can't look past Haaland or Kane. Um... You know, or you know what I mean. If we don't get any of them, then obviously Greenwood's your, your protege that's ready to step up. Hopefully, if it's not, then it has to be someone like Cristiano because I can't see, I can't look past people that is going to just walk into this team. If we do anything else shy from that, it's, it's going to be an issue. It's, it really is going to be an issue. We're going to have the same team. It's going to be the same team that Oli's picking because we know when Oli gets worried, he gets scared. He reverts back to what he's comfortable with, what he knows, and that is going to be Lindelof, Maguire, Scott McTominay, and Fred. And he's going to rinse them to the cows come home with Luke Shaw, Wan Basaka, and, and you know the lineup already. He's going to rinse yeah. them to the cows come home. But even 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 if let's like just say that's the case, for example, let's like just say that's the case. What happened when if Fred get injured? What happened if Fred get injured and we sell Magic? Because then you're going to put Pogba in a position where you don't like to play Pogba anyway, which is in the middle. You know, Pogba, don't, we don't, tr- he don't trust Pogba in the middle. The two players that play there too, they're not good enough, but at least they feel like they can get a job done anyways. So what happened if Fred or McTominay, one of them, get injured? Then what? And I feel like the midfield situation, I really feel like it's only going to get addressed if one of these kind of players get a very serious injury before, what do you call it? before the season starts. That's yeah, yeah. the only way they're going to address it because if not, that's why I keep on talking about guys like, what do you call it? Either we get in DD or uh, Declan Rice because if you don't get these two, anybody that come in ain't shifting none of these guys out. They ain't, right. they ain't shifting there. If Van Der Vick couldn't shift none of these guys out, nobody is. This is my point. This is this is my point. This is why um, you hear people talk about Basuma. You hear people talk about Basuma and all of these things. Okay, cool. His, is he in the big games or whatever, going to shift your Scott McTominay and Fred? Is he going to be the guy that only going to social, no matter how much we... Let me put this in. My battery's about to put in the charger. Ugh. Yeah. No matter how much, you know, people may think, like, he's a talent, Basuma, he's good. It's not even necessarily about what we think. It's what is Oli... What does Oli think of that player? What's he going to do? When push comes to stuff, look, we're sitting there thinking Donny van der Beek was a great talent before he came here. He's eating bench. I'm a Diallo, we're like, oh, he needs to play more. He's great. He's better than Dan James. Yeah, or Matt or whatever like this, right? You know, Matt is obviously technical. He's, he's served his time. But you're just like, why ain't this guy coming on? Instead, you're filling out the bench of old age pensioners type guys. Again, it's what Oli thinks of this player. If Oli, what will convince me of Oli is that Oli is one splash in the bag on this player. Whoever that player is, he needs to spend the bag. Man United might, fans might be saying, oh, no, we're always getting bumped. You know, all of this. Look, to a certain degree, we need we need that to happen again. We need that high fee to happen again where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer can't afford to bench this guy. If he's going to pay that type of money like he believed in Maguire and paid 80 million or whatever it is for Maguire, he's got to have that same confidence and do it with chess for the guy. That It shows me that he believes in that player, whether he's getting ripped off or not. He's forking out that money saying, I believe in you. I want you in my team. Right. Therefore, at the first glimpse of awkwardness, you're not going to be like, oh, Scott McTominay and Fred are going to be like, you know what? I believe in you. And I just don't know if that's going to happen with Basuma under Oli. 
if it was under another manager, you know, that maybe he's more technical, knows what he's after, knows what, you know, you know, Brendan Roy just pulling out signings out of his ass, cheap, nice, decent signings, and it looks like, you know, he's going to get probably get the best out of them again. But I just feel like for Oli, he needs to he needs to go in hard. This is why I'm like, Varane, I don't want to do, I don't want to hear bargain bites because Paul Torres, for me, I'm looking at it thinking, what does Oli think? Do you value him enough to be benching Lindelof and playing him as much as you you you, you would want to play Paul Torres for you know us fans? Do you value? I know he values Declan Rice. I know he values Graylish, these English guys, and I know he values Harden than guys like that. Who does he? You know who else he's gonna value? Maybe he'll value someone that's coming from the academy, which is why someone like Garner. He's obviously a loan to Nottingham Forest. You know, he's playing for them. He's doing his thing. He's got a few goals, actually. Maybe four goals, three assists in all competitions. He's doing his thing. He's been tooted as that future thing, but he's not ready now. Obviously, he needs more game time on loan and stuff like that. But it's worrying because we're not linked with no DMs outside of Declan Rice. That is, you know, unless he's doing a masterclass behind the scenes and he is negotiating with someone like an Ndidi or whatever it is, or Kessie or whatever it is. I don't see it. It's worrying. For I don't me. see it too. I don't see it too because United is no is not. We are not a club that is known for keeping secrets when it comes to like transfer. You know, everything. I think the only deal that probably like surprised us last summer, for example, was the Cavani and Ahmed deal, and that was because we were never in for him anyway. You know, Cavani, we were never in for him until they made like a last minute call to get this that rush that deal down the line because we look everywhere we couldn't get what we want. You know, mm-hmm. and if United were serious, they would literally try and get Ndidi. I really feel Ndidi comes for 50 million. You know, I really feel Ndidi comes for 50. Nah. Really come for 50. He's not really come for 50. Trust Look, me, Leicester. Leicester, can, Leicester, the way how they pulled our pants down, yeah, Pauls, with Maguire. There's no way. Yeah, yet, but Maguire, they're gonna let Maguire was go. an English guy. It don't matter. Maguire was English and he came for 80 million. You like sometimes you gotta be fair when it comes to players to Leicester. Remember, they sell Kante to Chelsea, they sell Maris to what do you call it to Man City too. So when the deal is right, they're gonna do that too. Right now, I feel like they already got a, a, another midfield coming anyways. You know, they sent a midfielder from uh, Leo, who is very very good no, anyway. So out, so Samaria, whatever it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So which means that they because they always they are one club that they always plan to lose players. They know Maguire was always going to leave, you know, because the summer before that, people tried, they couldn't get him. And then they went to go and sign a replacement. So they, they, they knew he was always going to leave. It was just about playing the, the long game to kind of like get as much money as you want. And obviously, eventually, my United blank because we waited a long time before we started negotiating with them. If they really want Indeedy and they start negotiating with Leicester now, trust me, 50 million would do that deal. Or even maybe less than that. No, we'll do that deal. no if you, way. No, if oh you my get, gosh. What are you on? If you, you get Bruno Fernandez. You know, Bruno Fernandez costs 45 million, you know, with Adam. This, for is, Bruno not, Fernandez. this is for one, you're buying players from the Portu- Portuguese league, yeah. Their players generally, yeah, go for a lower rate than, you know, you're talking about this Premier League players. Anyway, secondly, we're talking about Manchester United, not any other club. Manchester United has got. In this further, there's Premier League to Premier League tax, and then there's Manchester United tax on top. Manchester United tax is an extra 20 million flat rate. Do you understand? With Manchester United, I can't see Wilfred and Diddy coming for anything less, and I'm being generous here, than like 65 million. That's generous. I can't see it happening. Diddy. Unless, right, he's got like one year left on his contract or something silly like that. Trust me. When you're talking about defensive midfielders here, yeah, Wilfred and Diddy's name. Is is in there because there's not that many great specialist ones out there at the minute. Leicester know what they got. They know what they got. Yeah, they know what they got, but they don't have they don't have a 65 million guy. They don't have a 65 million guy. Look, right now I'm just saying you look at the transfer. If if guy like San Sancho, yeah, who's young, gonna have like about 10 years there too, and you got an English tax and the minor tax on top of that, and he's coming for 80 million, Bruno Fernandez. Who is arguably like one of the best midfielders right now? Came for forty-five million. In that, that was a lucky. That was a one-off. You know, like right now, this remember this guy was this guy here yeah, 
hadn't played in the Premier League. Obviously, he had that. Everyone was a bit cautious of him, even though he was blown up the Portuguese League. Look, right now, if someone looks at Bruno Fernandes right now, it's minimum 100 million you're talking about. 90 million, well, 80 million upwards, right? For someone like Bruno Fernandes right now, with his contract, you know, as it is right now. Yeah, but what, what is he need, he, need, he need contract anyway? Let's just, let's just say he need to go three years left on him. First of all, I tell you what, you call in the agent, you tell my United is interested there. Ain't no Nigerian guy that ain't gonna force a move to my United. Like that, that like you, that's what I'm just trying to say because opportunity that they, they don't grow up saying like their dream is to play for my United. But he's I mean, comfortable so he's though, he's Leicester. comfortable. He's comfortable at Leicester. It's not like I don't he's dying whether to you leave. are comfortable or not. He is coming. <laughs> if United you know, if United go for this players, United, Chelsea, my United go for this players, they are coming. I'm sorry, they are coming. I you know what's like interesting? <coughs> go on. Do you know what's interesting with what you mentioned earlier, though, about um, Leicester and the signing of Samari, yeah? Right. So, Leicester's a team, right, that's got Wilfred and Diddy, obviously, Tielemans. Mm-hmm. Right. They've got uh, Tielemans, Wilfred and Diddy. They've got uh, the guy Hamza Chowdhury that comes off the bench in a lot of their games when they want to, like... I hear he's leaving to go to Southampton. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. See, yeah, he's left to go to yeah. That's what I was coming to now. And then they've got like Memphis Mendy as well, who's another defensive midfielder. So this is yeah. an area, right, where they've got enough cover, it feels like. But then they've added to that and bought Samari. <coughs> now, I was thinking, when you was talking about Indidi, my mind, I don't know why I let this happen. I started thinking, wait, could there be something sneakily going on in the background? which Man United has somehow managed to keep out of the press. But then, now you said this child, Hamza Chowdhury guy potentially going to Southampton probably adds up. Maybe this he's getting replaced with Samari. But Samari, that's the thing. Samari is a quality player. You don't buy Samari. He is. No, he's Samari a quality player. So I'm just telling you, when Leicester do this kind of like deal, is either one of them. Either Tillemans or indeed one of them my late. And, uh, the links have been with Tielemans, though, isn't it? Like we've been linked to Tielemans. I think Liverpool's been linked we've to been Tielemans. Linked to, I, don't, I don't think, yeah, I think Liverpool have been linked to, to them to kind of like replace what because they, they lost another male for that too, so they might try to replace that too. Genie, yeah. But yeah, so I don't know, but I'm just telling you, Leicester always when, especially when they get their deals done early, they do this because they always anticipate like one of the players might leave. They play in the Europa League anyways, too. We know their squad depth is not good, but they will not. But that guy just won the French League. So he's not going to come and sit on the bench, you know. So I'm just telling you, one of these players might, might live. But I'm just saying, if United were a serious club and they push for that deal, trust me, Indeed, it ain't going to say like, oh, United won me and I'm going to just... I, I, he will want to come. No, he will want to come. Don't get me wrong. It's the money. Yeah, but you come. know what? In saying that, though, in saying that, in saying that, uh, Wilfred and Diddy... Contract expires 2024, June 2024, right? He's got two years left in his contract. I mean, no, am I right? Yeah, two years left in his contract. Maybe 65, 60 million could be enough to get him. Maybe it could be enough. 60 million is just too much. I'm telling you, 40 million do the deal. (laughs) 40, 45 bro, million. Bro, he ain't deal. coming. Bro. Fred even came for 50 million. Yeah, he ain't coming for no 40. But bro, how uh, old was Fred when he came? And how much would it cost? Fred, Fred, Fred was a rip-off. Fred was a rip-off. For a player coming from the Ukrainian league, that was a rip-off. And that's why my... Even Van der Beek. Van der Beek, yeah. This guy was playing in the Champions League final. He played in the Europa League final. Played for Champions League final. He was a Dutch international. And how much did we pay for him? And he's young too. He's younger than Indiri. How much did we pay for him? We paid like 35 million for that guy. Yeah, but another another thing about the Dutch league as well, and I don't know if there were any clauses in his contract. Maybe there wasn't, but the Dutch league as well is another league where players their, their price brackets are just different. You remember, like, look how many people yeah, but players talk about sucked. African players, African Ziek, players. All of these don't guys normally go for high. When was the last time you saw an African player get sold for like a, a, a high amount of money? You just need what United. African player went for like some stupid money. You need Man United to break that record. He was. I'm the, just not know. talking about Man United in general. When was the last time an African player went for a big transfer fee? I don't know. With Etu, maybe like Eto was like the last one. I don't know about Drogba. I can't remember what his fee was. Etu. Exactly because the thing about all the Diallo, transfer fee. Huh? Diallo went. Diallo forty million. 
Yeah, but Diallo, as I said to you, Diallo was a 19-year-old guy. He got another 10 years to go in him too. And it's, it's add-ons too. The thing about when they buy this kind of a place, too, one of the reasons why English players always cost expensive because you know once you buy them, they stay in the premiership for whenever it is and you, you uh, they only leave if you sell them. Yeah. You know, if you sell them. Guys like the mo- most of the African players too, normally when they go to a club after five or so years, like they lose value, you know, and you can really sell them for, 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 for big price anyways too. After that, they just literally go back to either uh, some next kind of like lower league and stuff like that. In Didi, look, he's young and stuff like that, but my United buying Didi, they're probably going to get like six years out of him. I, I mean, he's young, but I just can't see us getting him that cheap because what you're saying is that Manchester United, if you put it into context, Manchester United is going to spend less on in Diddy than we did on Aaron Wan-Bissaka that we got like, is it two, one and a half, two years ago, whatever it is like that. Wan-Bissaka is also Congolese, even though he's trying to get into the English team. We paid 50 million for that guy. He was English then time. He was English around that time. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we, we paid the English tax for him. We paid the English tax for him because he was an England international around that time. He's still an England international around that time too. And one, two, he was very young. Very, very young too. If we were to get Aaron Basaka now, trust me, we would not pay that 50 million for him. If we were to get him now, we probably COVID would not pay that would be money. Different. Yeah, COVID market would be different. It might have knocked off. Knocked off a little bit, but if, man, if we'll the contract see. expire, yeah, it's, it's, look, it expires in 2022. It expires in 2022. Well, indeed, it, no, sorry, 24. 24, sorry. If it's expired in 2024, look, let, let me just make sense to you right now. Wages wise, I don't think he's on big P. I don't think he's indeed probably going to be on 60,000. I think the match is going to be on like 60,000 a week, okay. you know. Yeah, he's probably going to be on 60,000 a week, you know. He's playing for Leicester. Who is not in the Champions League? Let's say ain't in the Champions League. My United come and say, hey, we want you. You're going to play in the Champions League. We're going to give you 80,000 or 100,000 a week. He's on 82.5K, apparently. 82, yeah. He might have to give him a hat. Leicester, Leicester will never, ever increase this deal. They will never increase this deal. They will not increase it. If he was to get a contract extension, it would probably be around the same amount of money. You know, a lot of the guys like they, they make a mistake. Like another guy that made a big mistake here was a uh, what do you call that number ten? What's his name again? He for Leicester. He's Leicester, they attack him here for that guy. Madison. 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 He's gone. His transfer to a big club is gone. He ain't making. He ain't getting no big transfer no more. You know, mm. after Leicester, I just see him going down, and now he got so much injury problem too. I'm just saying. Indeed, if my United approach Indeedy and then agree personal terms like, hey, agree personal terms with his agent, trust me, Leicester would have no option but to accept that 40 million. Because if he really got two years left on his team, maybe right now it's three because we haven't really kicking on to 2022 yet. So it's, it's, it's like three years now. Go to next season and the price is like literally like drop. I'm just telling you, you go for him, he will come. Because if Indeedy is going to worth 65 million, then Declan Rice, when they say Declan Rice is worth 80, then they, they justify when they say Declan Rice is worth 80. You know? I, mean, I don't think Declan Rice is even worth that. And they didn't I, just feel when it comes to, I just feel like when it comes to Manchester United, purpose, like when I hear about these prices and I see other clubs doing it, they can manage to get good deals. When I've seen Manchester United trying to go in for players, we're always getting ripped off. So when I say this price, it's not because I'm thinking, you know, like they can't potentially go for a cheaper price like what you're saying. I just feel like when it comes to Man United and how we've constructed our business over all of these years, we just always get ripped off. Look, where Aaron Wan-Bissaka, if Liverpool was after him, they would have probably got him for 30 million. Do you know what I mean? Manchester United, we pay 50 million. And I see it with a lot of these signings that we do, like Maguire, he would have gone to City. We all know that he would have gone to City than, gone to City less than what Manchester United paid for him. It's just how it happens. And that yeah, could vary with from the, five, with the Manguad, 10, deal, it was the, It was a pricing war. It was a pricing war. And the thing about the Maguire deal too is, let, let's face it, if it wasn't to the fact that we needed a centre-back desperately, United would have walked out of that deal. They would have not paid for that money. We were so desperate for a centre-back and we made it so obvious. Just like how now we are making it so obvious that we want a centre-back so badly. 
And the same way that we are making it obvious we need a striker. So why would we go Cavani? So we're not making it that obvious. But when you make it obvious that you need a player that bad, we this is it. We wanted a center back. And we 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 made it known to the whole world that we don't want no one else but Harry Maguire. That's what we made it known as. So if you make it known to a club that this is the guy that you want, mate, they can go as much high as they want because they know that this is the guy you want. And if we didn't get Maguire, let's say we were screwed. And we the were world screwed. knows. And the, world, the world knows that we're after a right mid, right winger, a DM, a centre back, and right back. That the world knows what our transfer. But well, the world knows that. But the world business. knows that my United won Declan Rice. The world knows that we won Declan Rice. You go for it. They did like, hey, you know, if they don't get me, they might go for Declan Rice. And after less than, where do I even see myself going? You know, I feel like he wants to stay in the Premiership. You know, a lot of like West African players always love to play in the Premiership. He do, he would not want to go to Italy or whatever. I mean, if the opportunity presents itself, they will. But he's an ambitious player. He want to play in the Champions League. These guys, when they go to and play in the national teams, all this guy talk about is Champions League. Mm. Next season, Ken is going to sit at home watching players for a Champions League. And he said it hurts him to be watching European football or like on the two. Trust me, it feels the same way too. I'm just saying, indeed, 45 million can do it. He will do it. He's a Nigerian this guy. This guy, You're always he coming can, up with these bro. wild figures. Like, this is Sancho all over again. Look, look, at the end of the day, right, I would rather Manchester United held out personally than go on for someone as a stopgap because I'm tired of having... I don't want us being in a position where you know, we've got midfielders like Scott McTominay, Fred, and maybe someone else we brought in as a stopgap that's no, is not significantly better than these two that we have now. And we're just trying to appease fans and keep people happy when it's not really going to put us in a good position to win trophies and challenge the likes of your cities, Liverpools and Chelsea's potentially. So for me, I would rather us hold out until we get the right man. And, and you know, Wilfred and Diddy's, you know, What's available? Declan Rice, if his price is, you know, fair, 80 million is way too high, what people are saying. You know, Kessie, personally, I think he's great and I'd love to see him at Manchester United as well. Um, specialist DMs, you know. Um, outside of that, you know, there's a few other names here and there, but I don't want us to just be filling the void because we, you know, for the for the sake of doing so. Um, yeah, we want four players or whatever it is like that. If we can only get two, but those players are the first team as walking into the squad, then I'm happy with that. Then us getting four and then two is clearly eating up bench because Oli is known for that, not making substitutions. And I think a lot of our fans forget that. They're like, oh, no, it won't be good enough. No, no, no. We need to do this and do that. Yeah, Oli can go and spend the money, but we've been spending money inappropriately for a long time now. Oli ain't going to make the subs if you don't trust these guys. It needs to be guys that he can trust to walk into that team and command it. And right now, the two players that I can guarantee, I mean, the players that I can guarantee say that do that is Varane, Sancho, Declan Rice from the players that he's been linked to, Indidi definitely, um, and Trippier can give, you know, wan a challenge, but I don't see him guaranteed walking in, depends on how he performs. So we need to be looking at that. If we're saying, you know, that's an improvement, some people may say Declan Rice is not that great. For me, He's one of the only ones that will displace Met Fred um, that Oli's linked to. And, you know, he's the only person DM. So it's just one of those things, man. It's like, we need to be thinking realistically as well. When we say Basuma, is Oli going to, is, is Oli going to be playing him over Met Fred? Do I don't, I don't think Basuma, I don't think we'll be linked. I feel like if we go for Basuma, it'll probably be like late to the transfer room. I don't think we're even interested anyway. And I hear Ruben Navas too. I hear like Asna are interested in him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For things, so I feel like he might go to Asna. I don't think he's even good enough for my United anyways. Personally, I don't think so anyway. I haven't watched a lot of him, but I don't think anyway. But I feel like if only don't get... See this place that we said right now? Sancho, Varan, uh, Trippier, Rice, or Diddy. If only don't get three out of this place, he will get stacked. Because I really don't see United having a good season without this place, really. So, and I feel like he knows it too because the way he's been talking this summer is very different from the way he used to talk last summer. Because last summer too, you know, he he's was more talking aggressive about, now. oh, huh? He's more aggressive now, Oli. He's a he's little bit more aggressive. very aggressive now because he knows no winning that Europa League has just, I don't know, something has changed in him. He knows, he knows he cannot go another season without 
a trophy. Right. He knows that. Yeah, yeah. Because, and it's not even about the board. He's going to lose confidence in his players. Yeah. And let's face it, sometimes it's not a board that fires you. Sometimes it's the players that fires you. And he knows that too. So now, every interview that I've heard about him since we lost the Europa League is that the teams uh, that want something, they are far ahead of us. And if we have to cut them, we need to strengthen. We need to strengthen. We need to strengthen to close the gap. That's all I've been hearing. Last year, I was hearing something like about progress and because of the COVID market, we might not be able to. Strengthen. But then this year, it's all about strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. And believe me, strengthen is not buying someone to sit on a bench. Strengthen is buying someone to be in the first level. Mm. Because mm. if you don't buy someone to just let a guy like Fred Hofer, like mine, that had a great season, to be sitting on a bench, that is not a strength. Because your manager is telling you that we did not have a good season and you are sitting there telling that we have a great season, that guy deserves to be on the bench and not be playing. And they know it too. Thanks. They know yeah. it too. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's it. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, it's not that they they want people like Scott McTominay, Fred, or even Lindelof being sold. They'll be happier if they were on the bench. And these people will be decent bench people. They're just not starters. They're not guys that we should be starting. And that's just it. So hopefully we do get these signings over the line, you know, and it's going to be a case of money for me. Glazers need to put their money where their mouth is, you know. They said they're going to be paying all of those fines that come from ESL. You know, we probably had a transfer body, a budget of, you know, X number of millions set out now. You know, you said you want to invest in a club. How can you alter that? Can you dig deep? Can you dig deep? Bring out that P, slap on an extra 10, 10 million that's needed to get the likes of your trippiers or your, your um, what do you call it, or your defensive midfielders or your centre-backs. Like, do it, get it over the line, get it done so we can move on. Because at the end of the day, if you're getting a Declan Rice, he's still very young, he's going to be here for the next 10 years. Everyone will forget about what you did last summer. No pun intended. Same with Jaden Sancho, Kieran Trippier less so, but I can just imagine Jaden Sancho, Kieran Trippier, if we're trying to win the game and you're, you've got those two on the pitch, the right-hand side, it's going to be a lot more difficult to defend against us. You've got to worry about them two doing their partnership thing as well as Luke Shaw and Rashford doing their partnership thing. For for me, it will make us a lot more balanced, you know, a lot more attacking, give us a little bit more bite when it comes to breaking down those teams with the low block. And quite frankly, we need to get right. these deals done. We need to get it done, man. I mean, yeah. how good would it be if next season, my United bench... Is uh, Greenwood, uh, Marshall. Sorry, let me just say, even let me just say Greenwood, uh, Cavani, or Marshall, depending on who that anyway. Ahmed, two on the bench, too. And then you got probably like, let's say, Fred or even McTominay on the bench. And then you got Trippier, too, there. And then you got Tellers, there, too. You know, with a goalkeeper there. How good would this bench feel? That's and if you are drawing one one day, you can change it all the time. You can take Rashford out. And put Marcia on. You can put Ahmed on. You can put Greenwood on. That is a quality that we need too. You can exactly. even put, even forget about Van uh, Van der Weyde too. Like that is what kind of a like bench you you need too. And I feel like sometimes you just need that too. Like even to rest Pogba once in a while, knowing that there's quality in there too, and then he can come on too and then change the game. You gotta have all these options out there to make the squad very balanced and make you also have kind of like options to not play a whole like hundred hundred minutes and know that the guys on your bench are not good enough to change the result. That is just the worst feeling you want to have exactly. as a fan and also as a manager too. And I feel like exactly. he needs to change that too. He really didn't need to change that too. Look, you've heard it from us, man. You've heard it from us. Look, this is the old t and I'm banter room where opinions got shared and smoke gets served. It's your boy Firms and it's NK. Look, we've just completed another episode of Smoke. Look, leave a like, a comment, subscribe flick the notification and join the wave it's gonna be peak this summer and we're bringing all of the latest news to you in our unique way look we're out